Hey guys, I just had a couple minutes it's going to the post office and uh, thought I'd pull over for a second and just talk about this. You know, the reason that I did that whole, I have a whole playlist on contentment uh, is because it just, I really, I realized all of a sudden how discontent or feeling of lack uh, is at the root really of the problems in, in our Christian life, in our Christian walk, and why we could be fooled and, you know, deceived, seduced by the enemy's lies is from a feeling of lack, uh, of need, of, you know, that we don't, it's so important to realize all that we have in Christ and all that, that he is our provider. He's our provision. He's our satiating supply. He's everything we need. And all that we have in him, uh, is just crucial because, you know, think about that. Really, that's why Ad, uh, Adam and Eve fell in the garden. That's what Paul was so afraid of is, um, that as the servant of Eve, but, uh, the, that we would be, uh, you know, seduced away from that single eye for Christ, the simplicity that's in Christ, where we think there's some other pursuit that we need, that we are lacking. And, you know, the serpent tried to convince Eve that there was something that she lacked, that God was holding back from her that was not enough. So he appeals to your sense of lack and or to your greed. And someone said recently, and I thought, I thought, gosh, this is really wise. The only people that can be conned are those that are needy or greedy. Needy as in a way where they have a sense of lack or greedy as in they haven't learned the secret of contentment to be content in Christ through spiritual growth and knowing what you have in him so that you, you want all the wants, right? I think it was James that had said, um, you know, you ask, you have not because you ask not and you ask, but when you ask, you, uh, you, you don't receive because you ask that you will, you can consume it up on your lust, right? Um, so it isn't from a place of contentment in Christ, but from a sense of lack and you know want 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 rather than realizing that we have all we need in the lord and that he uh that we have found contentment in him as paul said in philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me which again is not about you being able to do anything you put your mind to but rather in context he was talking about how whether he has much or whether he has little you know that he was content in all circumstances and that's a Point that the Lord took him to through spiritual spiritual growth, you know, through the meat of the word, through learning who he was in Christ and all he had in him, that he, he, that's that peace that passes understanding, that sense of contentment in the Lord, you know, my goodness, what, what else could we want? Um, of course, we all groan, you know, our we groan within ourselves for the day of redemption when we'll have our glorified bodies and we'll see Christ face to face. That's understandable. But our pursuit here on the earth is of Christ himself just to know him more, to grow a grace and the knowledge of him. And all the while having that sense of blessing that Paul talked about to, you know, the, to the believers of the church of Galatia, that sense of blessing in knowing uh, your your sonship, your the richness that you have in Father God, in the family of God, in Christ, uh, already he's held nothing back from you, not one thing. Uh, he is freely with Christ, giving you all things. You are already blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly, in heavenly places. Um, he has qualified you. You don't need to qualify yourself in any way. You don't need to pursue anything. That is Satan's biggest... Uh, I believe it's his biggest uh, deception in the church amongst believers is to convince them that they need to pursue to be or to do or to gain or attain something that they already have been given freely, right? 
And that way they are doing and striving in their flesh apart from the Lord rather than walking in those good works that he is doing, that he is working in and through us out of a sense of blessing. Um, rather, you know, anyway, it's a whole different thing and it just changes the whole mindset and whether there's any food there or not, you know, Christ said he is the life. He is our satiating supply. We eat and drink of him and we live. He is a person. He's not just going to heaven when you die. He is the eternal life that we receive and have. Uh, that that living, that fountain of living water springing up from our innermost being. The, the moment we believe the gospel that quenches our thirst, we just have to partake, right? Um, he wants to come in and dine with us and he is he says that he is he is our our food and our drink and it's a wonderful peaceful joyous thing that we just need to be sharing with each other as new testament ministers and encouraging one another in that and in the faith rather than teaching them to strive showing them that they have lack and telling them they, they must strive or work for these things rather than in faith, abiding in those things, enjoying those things, uh, and letting Christ accomplish the work in and through them. So I just wanted to share that with you. And I noticed, so uh, if you haven't caught David Benjamin's last few videos, check them out. He talks about these things a lot. And it's, it's interesting because uh, the most recent sermon I heard at my church was about contentment. And I was like, wow, that, that is so spot on. It is just, if the Lord is not your source and you are not content in him, it's because you're being lied to, you know, you have been lied to and uh, don't put up with it anymore. You know, not today, Satan. That's what I say. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. Have a great day.